It was so funny on Tuesday. Tuesday was so funny. You you were you were probably in on it. I I mean I know a lot of you were, but for the rest of you, I'll I'll, t- I'll tell you guys what happened. So Eli was mad at me for eating the last devil dog again. And you know Eli, he started a prank war. And what he did was he hired all the guys from CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, and he had them record hours of presidential election footage, but like, you know, as if Trump had won. And then and then and then he hacked into my cable and made a whole different internet that corroborated all this like Trump's gonna be president nonsense and rerouted all my devices to that. And I'll be honest with you, he almost got me. I almost believed it. And then, of course, I realized how infinitely more likely that series of events was to the alternative explanation, namely that the election for the president of the United States of America was just won by Donald wall building, Muslim banning, disability mocking, climate change denying, fat shaming, pussy grabbing, Frank and Cheeto Trump. I mean, seriously, guys, gals. What in the monkey shit just happened? How how the fuck am I supposed to put words together now? I'm supposed to get on here today and not just see how long I can hold the U and fuck. What the hell do you want from me? I I, I got some set of words that that encapsulates the nuclear fuck tartary that just befell the world. Donald Trump is going to be president. That will always have happened, right? We will never make up for that. If every American went out tomorrow and cured a different strain of cancer, we would still be the country that elected Donald Trump to run it, who put Donald Trump in charge of the world's largest nuclear arsenal. This shit's going to be in history books. Our great, great, great grandkids are going to know about this and they're going to tell them that we already knew about the pussy grabbing shit before we elected him. I mean, remember back when I was going to do jokes about the president having a vagina? (laughs) I was going to come out and I would say like more like over office and then you would laugh and we would move on to other shit. It was a simpler time. A time before Nate Silver could go fuck himself. Back when we were counting the 2018 midterms before they'd hatched. A time when we so radically underestimated the per capita stupidity of America that we never took the words President Donald J. Trump seriously. A time when we naively said there is absolutely no way that I am surrounded by the kind of frothing at the mouth shit for brains dingle tards it would take to elect Donald fucking Trump to the highest office in the country. I would have noticed how few of them got their pants on the correct appendages every day by now. But now we live in a different world, a more negligently stupid world. And the most terrifying thing about this world is that it is genuinely post-truth. You know, we just went through an election where one of the candidates would literally just make up whatever number he wanted, attach it to whatever problem he wanted, and then just carry on. And as we speak, four out of every two black people in Chicago is being murdered. And it doesn't fucking matter that even the most conservative media outlet you can possibly take seriously is saying, well, yeah, that's bullshit and it doesn't even make sense. Sorry about that. Because apparently the majority of voters don't care what's true. They live in a world where global warming is a myth and Jesus is going to save them and their biggest concerns are the mind control powder on their juice box lining and the yoga mats they put in Subway bread. And while I'll admit that this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened in all of human history, I feel like it's a pretty solid contender for the stupidest. It could lead to the worst. We've been running around here pretending we're smart enough to keep doing democracy even after the George W. Bush re-election thing. You know, we were all like, no, look, we did a black guy. He's a lawyer. He knows smart words. And we fooled ourselves into thinking we could be trusted around voting booths again. And make no mistake, if you're looking for somebody to blame, look in the fucking mirror. I know when I look there, I see a guy who has a political podcast. He kept on hiatus for an entire presidential election because he was too busy doing that other show about important stuff like what David A.R. White looks like a cartoon character fucked, which is admittedly probably not what you see when you look in the mirror. So maybe you can start by blaming me, but then look in the mirror and blame yourself because when things are this fucked up in a democracy, it's too late to blame the candidates. You have to blame the electorate. 
And no matter how much you did, you obviously didn't do enough. So yes, I am talking to you too. Unless you're one of our non-American listeners, in which case I'm just glad you haven't stopped hanging out with us. I, and, and, and I apologize in advance for bombing your country when one of your late night comedians makes a joke about our president's sexual assault bravado. I mean, I'd love to just point at somebody and be able to say like, yo, it was all the, uh, it, was, it was the Christians or whatever. And then we could gang up on the real culprit. But in a case like this, there is no one real culprit. And pretending there is, is isn't any way to solve problems unless of course those problems are voter turnout in the rust belt in which case it works just fucking fine look the real problem here is that we're a bunch of spoiled brats that have lived in a democracy that could essentially function on cruise control for a couple of decades we bitch about the system without realizing that we are the system now and despite all the evidence to the contrary we trusted americans not to do the most stupidly self-destructive thing they could possibly do now, don't get me wrong here. I am not trying to tack onto that tired trope that says we're all equally to blame for the 60 million people who actually went to the polls to vote for a misogynistic, white supremacist, sexual assaulter. There are certainly people who bear more blame than others. And if you happen to see a frightened white man pining for the days when brown people were easier to subjugate internationally when you looked in the mirror, you deserve way more derision than the guy who's thinking to himself, you know, I could have taken Ted to the polling station. Ted liked Hillary. Fuck. But when something is this broken, it is everyone's fault who has the remotest chance of fixing it and hasn't done that yet. But if you need a silver lining, I might have one for you. Because when it all is said and done, Donald Trump actually will make America great again in about four years after we're done erasing all the progress we just made. See, look, he's going to teach yet another generation that you can't sit this shit out and trust the American people to vote sanely. He'll incense enough people to get Democratic majorities in both houses of Congress in the midterms, and assuming we make it through the next four years without a Twitter fight sparking an atomic holocaust, we'll rise from the ashes of this disaster with a populace that knows their democracy cannot function without their full attention. And look, the only other choice is that we keep going in this direction until we collectively stupid ourselves to death in a matter of about eight years. And I feel like at this point, both of those outcomes leave us with a better world.